Catacetonae in Lecca and self-watering, Catacetonae in semi-hydro, Catacetonae in inorganic media. Whichever way you want to look at it, it's time to water mine, or is it? Which one is going to be watered, which one isn't, and why? That's what I'm going to point out today, and I hope that this video is helpful if you're growing your Catacetonae in a similar setup as mine, or if you're growing it in organic media, same thing applies. When I show you my example, ignore the setup. If you're in doubt, continue watching because I'm going to clarify. I have two examples to show you, and one is going to be watered, and the other one isn't. Welcome, it's good to have you here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Always an exciting time when it's time to water your catacetonae for the first time in the season. Or is it? <laughs> Some people are a little bit hesitant to do so. Maybe uncertainty takes away from that joy. So I would like to clear that up. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to water one of mine. This is the Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl. And right here we have my Orchid Glade Jack of Diamonds. So let me tell you, there's two similarities going on here. And one of them is worse than the other. Very, very shriveled pseudobulbs. And that is a normal status quo. That is what happens when the watering was reduced so that the new roots of the orchid can get into the pot and be ready to actually absorb water. So this can look very alarming, spooky, and scary. Trust me, I have had worse especially when it comes to the non-self-watering method of growing these orchids, it can be that the back bulb, the oldest bulb, is going to be absorbed completely, which is fine as long as there's enough reserves going on for the rest of the orchid, and clearly mine has a lot of reserves going on. But the shriveling doesn't end there, because here on my Jack of Diamonds, I also have some very shriveled pseudobulbs. But the difference between the two is here. I still have a lot of energy. They're not as shriveled. These pseudobulbs are much more robust in comparison to the ones of the Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl. And of course, we're always looking at the roots. Now, you can see that my pots aren't transparent, so I can see diddly squat, except for what's going on at the surface right here. And I don't see these roots really making any kind of advancement that impress me enough to say, yeah, you're going to get some water. Meanwhile, one root is going in right there. You can see it going in, but I'm not really impressed with the fact that these roots are long enough to water. So my reservoirs are now bone dry because I don't want to jeopardize any new roots going into the pot. I'm also looking at the height of the growth of this orchid. She has not yet surpassed by any stretch of the imagination the previous bulb. You can say, yeah, this leaf is taller and this leaf is taller, but no, not impressed. That still has to go another 30% higher, in my opinion, for this orchid to grow long enough roots into the pot before she gets watered. And besides, all the pseudobulbs in the back, while they look a little bit shriveled, there's still plenty of energy going on. And I doubt very much I'm going to lose a single pseudobulb before it is actually time to water this orchid. By comparison though, let me show you my Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl, and I will show you the comparison of the growth. Look at that. You see how it towers above the previous bulb. So the reference point here being the previous bulb, right here, and she is sticky, as is the other one. The happy sap is flowing on the back of the leaves here. Oh my goodness, it's just, <laughs> it's wonderful. But anyway, let's continue. Here's the reference bulb. You see how the growth is already towering way above it. In comparison to the Jumbo Mickey, we still have a ways to go for that to happen. And with that, in this case, I also happen to have some aerial roots not doing what they're supposed to do, as in go into the pot. But it gives me a little bit of a cheat. I have to wash my hands. <laughs> but it allows me to cheat a little bit here, because if these roots are this long on the outside, where I have very little humidity, but I have more humidity in the pot, because for the longest time I did leave water in the reservoir to sustain the older roots, because that root system is still active in this setup, seeing as this orchid was not repotted, 
I have humidity in that pot based on what I'm seeing out here and how that beautiful new growth is already way up there far ahead of the previous bulb this orchid's going to get its first flush and we're going to add some fertilizer and this orchid we're going to wait for another week maybe 10 days and let the other growth catch up let me tell you about the flushing and the fertilizer quantity that I'm doing seeing as this is the first time the roots are going to come in contact with water we still have new roots coming that's going to be okay we still have root tips at the surface that i can see down through the leka there that's okay i'm going by what i'm seeing here with the length of the roots because by the quantity of the roots i have in the pot i have long roots in the pot that are ready to absorb water now in past years what i've also done is missed these roots the aerial roots just to see how the velamen actually responds i was going to water anyway but just out of a matter of curiosity and sure enough after a little while they started to go a little bit green which is exactly what we want i'm not going to do that this time because you can maybe see i'm losing a second growth down here I started with two new growths on this orchid at the beginning of the season. I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled, thinking I'm going to get two new growths to develop. Now, this one is just callousing over. It's not progressing. So I'm just going to leave it. I don't want it to rot out. So I'm just not going to miss anything. But we are going to go ahead and flush. I'm flushing this through because in my setup, my old roots are still active and they haven't had water for a very long time. So now at least the older root system is going to also get a drink much needed. The new root system will still have a bit of a Teflon effect and that's fine. That's normal. But the old root system is going to go, oh my goodness, finally, finally. And that's all there is to it because now the roots are just going to absorb everything that's in the pot and the new roots are going oh hey now now they're going to understand what is going to be expected of them when it comes to fertilizing right out of the gate i will not be putting in the 600 parts per million that this orchid normally gets when the new roots are really actively going gung-ho doing their job i am putting in 300 parts per million that is all. It's kind of a weak solution compared to what this orchid can and should have. But it's the first time I'm fertilizing this orchid since she went dormant. We're going to start off a little bit gently and at least give the older root system a much, much needed boost. <laughs> even as I talk, even as I flush, I can hear them going, oh, what a relief to have this wonderful liquid around us. Okay. So moving forward, as my climate is super dry, I have very little humidity. Unfortunately, these roots right here, we are going to lose them. They will peter out. They will dry out eventually, which is very, very sad. But I am enjoying the visual while I have it. Also, moving forward, I'm expecting that eventually the back bulbs will plump up again. They may not be as shiny and beautiful as they were before we went into this season, but at least they will do their job. I'm also not expecting to lose my back bulb here. So first watering. I hope that some of these tips were helpful when it comes to your catacetinae as to when it's go time. And I hope that it was helpful as to when it isn't go time. If you can't see your roots, like in my case, then check your growth this is not enough not yet but if you can see your roots like you can see here in my case in the back yes i can't see them in the pot but i've got the aerial reference here they are approximately five inches long and if your growth of the season is towering over the previous bulb ooh, happy days get to watering start the first time with a very weak solution half of what you would normally do and then <laughs> keep up the challenge is keep up water and fertilize water and fertilize everything else right now is grow time 
I am always so happy when this part of my Cata Setene season starts. Once again, I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions to your specific case, if you have any uncertainties, let me know in the comments where I will be happy to address the specifics depending on what examples you throw at me. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.